Cortez. Yes, sir. One moment, please, for Mr. Dick Cody of the Washington Broadcast News. All right. Morning, Dick. Haven't talked to you since our lunch at the White House. That's right, sir. And it was, that was a great deal of ex good experience, and this will be too. And I thank you very much for talking to us. Well, I'm pleased to do it. Mr. President, you said you will launch a hard campaign to get Congress to pass your tax reform package when you and Congress return to Washington. What will you do first? Well, uh, we're working on the schedule of appearances and so forth. I will be taking the this issue to the people. I think they're the ones who have to show us exactly what they think. And according to all the evidence we have so far, the people are pretty much united that tax reform is exactly what we need. I think they have been misinformed to a certain extent by some pressure groups that want one item or the other uh, taken out of the tax reform program, but we feel we have a, a good reform there, and it'll be the first one, literally, that we've ever had in the income tax. How do you plan to persuade Congress to accept both budget cuts and tax reforms, particularly now that you're getting some negative reaction not only from Democrats, but also from Republicans in both House and Senate? Well, let me point out one thing. Actually, on tax reform, there is no argument about whether we should have it or not in the Congress. The approach is completely bipartisan. The only areas of disagreement have to do with some features of the program, whether it should do one thing or the other. Now, the same thing is true of the budget. It is true that they have gotten together, and before they went home, they passed a, a budget resolution in, in the Congress. It's a non-binding resolution. It is a compromise. Uh, I still think that the budget we originally submitted was the best for dealing with the deficit problem and reducing government spending. But um, we now have this one, and again, if there is disagreement, it would be over particular items where to cut, for example, and, and how much. I'm going to be watching it very carefully because uh, each one of the features has to be augmented by legislation and appropriation bills, and uh, I'm prepared to veto uh, at any time if they start to add in things that uh, would increase the, the, uh, the deficit. And I know that there are a number of spending bills that are still before the Congress. President Harry Truman once kept Congress in session when the members wanted to go home. Do you have any plans for keeping them in session, perhaps through Christmas and New Year's, in order to force tax reform or spending cuts? No, and uh, Dick, I think I'd have to tell you that if, uh, if I did have any ideas of that kind, I don't think I would uh, mention them now. But no, we haven't considered that. We've just thought that we're going to do everything we can to aid the Congress in dealing with these and uh, uh, getting the plate cleared uh, this year. Mr. President, here in Washington, the uproar over apartheid in South Africa is reaching something of a crescendo, and there's talk of economic sanctions against South Africa. If Congress passes such sanctions, what will be your reaction, veto or no veto? Well, Dick, I've always refused to say whether I will specifically veto something uh, before it gets to my desk, because you never know just exactly what it's going to look like when it gets there. I will tell you that I am basically opposed to the idea of uh, punitive sanctions. I think in this particular case, in South Africa, they would hurt the very people we want to help. They would have an effect on the economy that would result in more unemployment, setbacks in the gains that have been made by uh, labor and by the, the blacks in South Africa. And so uh, I can tell you I'm, I'm standing back and looking with a kind of jaundiced eye at at what may come to me, but then the final decision as to whether to veto or not will depend on exactly what does at my desk. What do you plan to do about foreign footwear imported into this country? Leave it alone or cut it back? Well, I've, that's a decision that I have to give an answer to in the next several days. Uh, I'll answer that in a broad brush stroke also. Uh, I am opposed to protectionism. Protectionism is a two-way street and uh, you may help some particular industry with protectionism or uh, some group of employees, and you find that you've done it at the expense of other industries, other employees. And I recall very 
well in the Great Depression back in the early 30s when this country did turn to protectionism uh, with the mistaken belief that it might help somehow in the Depression. It was then the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Bill, and all it did was expand the Depression more worldwide than it was and make it worse and prolong it. So uh, I have to tell you basically, uh, I don't think that protectionism uh, is the way to go. We're trying to talk to our trading allies about a meeting to get trade more open more fair between all countries, open markets uh, in all countries. Mr. President, when you meet with Soviet leader Gorbachev, are there proposals that you'll make to him to ease U.S.-Soviet tension? Well, I'm looking forward to the talks with him, and I hope uh, that it won't be just a session of trying to make some agreements on particular specific issues, but that we can get right down to uh, discussing the problems between us and an agenda for the future so that we can eliminate the hostilities and the suspicions if that's possible. There's no question but that the Soviet Union has made it plain that they are embarked on an expansionist program. They believe in the one world communist state, the world revolution. But at the same time, you have to wonder if this is not based on their fear and suspicion that the rest of us in the world uh, mean them harm. Now, I think that we can present evidence to show that we have no such intention. And if we could discuss things from the standpoint that we're the only two nations in the world, I believe, that could start World War III. We're also the only two nations in the world that could bring about world peace. And I would think that that would be our task in history uh, to deal with that problem. And I am going to do my best to present the evidence that would show and prove that this country has no uh, intention of taking hostile action against them. And also, however, that we believe we have good reason to believe, to think uh, that they uh, do have hostile intent. Their expansionism worldwide, their invasion of Afghanistan and so forth. But I wish we could get that out on the table and hopefully uh, reduce the suspicions between us. Thank you, Mr. President, very, very much. It's Thank been you, Dick. My best to your wife. Talk to you again, sir. Thank you. We have Bob Mohan from WSB Radio. Right. Go ahead, please, gentlemen. Good morning, Mr. President. This is Bob Mohan with WSB Radio in Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, good morning, Bob. Good to talk to you. Thank you so very much, Mr. President, for this opportunity to talk with you this morning. Since time is at a premium, I have a three-part question regarding South Africa, sir. In view of the increased unrest in South Africa, Mr. President, do you anticipate any change in our policies in South Africa? Uh, no, not really, because I have to look at what has been accomplished so far. Uh, we have, by our relationship with South Africa, which has always over the years been a friendly one, uh, we have made it plain, in spite of that, that apartheid is very repugnant to us and that they should go down the path of reform and bringing about a, a more perfect democracy in their country. And our present relationship has, we believe, resulted in some uh, very substantial changes. The, the very fact that uh, uh, the now the, the blacks are ability at being in labor unions or even having their own labor unions, the fact they can buy property in the heretofore white areas, that they can own businesses in some 40 uh, white-dominated business uh, districts. They have eliminated the segregation that we once had in our own country, the type of thing where host hotels and restaurants and uh, places of entertainment and so forth were uh, segregated. Uh, that has all been eliminated. They recognize now interracial marriages and all. But well, we believe that for us to take an action now, such as some are suggesting, turning our backs and walking away would leave us with no persuasive power whatsoever. We think that if we continue, uh, we can help the present administration there, which is a reformist administration, as evidenced by the things that I have 
have uh, just mentioned. Mr. President, what is your reaction to Reverend Jerry Falwell's statement that uh, Bishop Tutu is a phony who does not represent the interest of South African blacks? Well, I was very pleased to see his clarifying statement uh, yesterday, I believe it was, and what he had to say about that and his apology to Bishop Tutu. It seems, from what I could read, that his original statements were based on more, not his own judgment, but on quotations from those people that he had met with in South Africa, both blacks and whites. You know, we must recognize that the black uh, majority in South Africa is a combination of minorities. There are at least 10 tribal divisions there. And so he heard that some considered Bishop Tutu a leader, others rejected him as a leader. And this was what he was trying to say. but. I was very pleased when he uh, went public and said that his use of the word phony was really an unfortunate choice of words, and he certainly had never meant in any way uh, to describe the character or the beliefs or philosophy of Bishop, Bishop Tutu. He was trying, he used mistakenly the word to describe the thing that he had found, that he was not recognized as, quote, a black leader of all the blacks. Mr. President, do you fear a pro-communist government may take power in South Africa if the present government fails? This is a, a fear that many people who call my talk show express. Uh, how do you feel about that? I have to say that for us to believe that the Soviet Union is not in its usual style, uh, stirring up the pot and waiting in the wings for whatever advantage they can take, we'd be very innocent, naive, if we, uh, if we believed we didn't believe that, that they're there, mm -hmm. ready to do that. Okay, the uh, next question I have uh, regards tax reform, Mr. President. Several members of the Georgia congressional delega delegation are saying that tax reform will be the first order of business when Congress reconvenes. After all the gnashing of teeth, debate, and compromise, can the American people expect any reform in the tax system this year? I have to be optimistic and believe they can because we're going to push very far, hard for it. You see, if we don't do it this year, then we've got to wait a whole n other year, another year before this can be implemented. I think there are such advantages to the program, the tax reform program that we've presented, the simplification, the fairness, the advantage to the family. I was greatly encouraged when a committee of the House, dominated by the opposing party, came forth the other day with a statement that this tax plan, as we've presented it, offers the most advantages to the American family of any of the tax proposals that have been made. So we're going to try very hard. I know that the with the Congress it isn't so much uh, an outright opposition as it is their concern that they've got too much on the plate uh, to, to get to this in time. Mr. President, I have one more question I've been allowed to... Uh you have been very kind to allow me to ask you some questions. Since my listening audience comprises about 36 states, I would like to afford you an opportunity to ask them something that they can discuss with me during my show on Monday night. Is there something you would like to uh, ask them? Oh, my. <laughs> well, I wish I'd had some warning about that. I could probably think of another uh, of several things. You'll probably think of a thousand things afterwards. I know that's sort of slipping it in the back door. I didn't check with Sue Mathis on that, but I thought perhaps you would have something that you might like to ask them because they'll be talking to me on Monday night. Well, there are a couple of things that I where I think there's a possibility of great misinformation. One, we've just been talking about the tax reform. I know that the people have been told where we're eliminating a number of so-called uh, tax deductions and so forth. Uh, in return for the much lower rates, that if the people have any questions as to exactly uh, how this would come out for them, regarding what the fairness would be, would their taxes be increased or reduced? They, in fact, will be reduced. The only people who have to fear this are those people who've been avoiding their fair share of taxation by taking advantage of certain uh, tax shelters and loopholes and so forth. Uh, okay, but well, if they would ask so that they would know and understand... Thank you very much for this opportunity. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thomas Ricolato from WRHC Radio Station Miami. One moment. Go ahead, please, gentlemen. Uh, good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Thomas. It's great to hear your voice again. Uh, sir, first of all, how 
do you feel? I feel just fine. I really do. As a matter of fact, as soon as you and I are finished here, I'm going over and saddle up a horse and take a ride. Well, Mr. President, we're very glad. Uh, sir, two years ago in the White House, I asked you about the kennedy Khrushchev agreement, and you said that as far as you are concerned, that agreement has been abrogated many times by the Russians and Cuba. My question, sir, is, are you prepared to denounce that agreement publicly and officially? Now, are we talking about the agreement of, of uh, did I understand, of the, the uh, kennedy a Khrushchev agreement with after the missile crisis in Cuba? Yes, sir. Ah, well, actually, that was an agreement, an informal agreement. It had no legal standing. And it is true that the Soviet Union have observed the most important part, which was the um, not replacing the uh, nuclear missiles in Cuba or having any there. They have observed that. Uh, almost from the beginning, however, there are other facets of that kind of informal agreement that have been violated. Uh, the use of Castro's forces throughout the world, such as in Angola and, and all, uh, his uh, interference in Central America and Latin America in an attempt to uh, get overthrows of legitimate democratic governments and all. So uh, I don't see where there's any need to take any action with regard to that particular agreement, but simply to deal with each issue as it comes up and uh, what they are doing and what they're not doing. And what they're doing with regard to stirring up revolution in Central America is wrong for all the Americas, and I think all of us should oppose it. Mr. President, as you have said, Castro has been waging war on the U.S. for 26 years, exporting terrorism and subversion in this hemisphere, and now trafficking with drugs. Isn't the self-defense to take measures to counter those attacks by Castro? Yes, and I think we are in dealing with it where he is attacking, such as in right now in Nicaragua. Uh, we did it before that in El Salvador when we first uh, came into this administration. Uh, the whole question was whether Salvador was going to uh, uh, go communist. Well, now we have a democracy there. There have been several elections and supervised elections in which we know that they were free of any corruption. Democracy is on the march and in other areas. And the right now, the sore spot is Nicaragua and we're going to continue our help and support of the freedom fighters. Mr. President, by the way, speaking to the OAS in 1982, you said that freedom cannot survive if our neighbors live in misery and oppression. Can you tell us if the Cubans can expect some kind of help from the United States uh, to seek freedom for Cuba? We have, on more than one occasion, we have heard some proposals from the present Cuban government about wanting a better relationship and wanting to discuss with us uh, how that could come about. We've responded, and then we found that really they, they had no concrete proposal. They were offering nothing. Uh, I do not believe that armed overthrow is the answer, but I believe that we should continue uh, some of the restraints and restrictions that we have with regard to our relations with Cuba, but at the same time, uh, make it evident that any time that they want to prove by deed, not just word, that they are willing and want to come back to the community of American nations uh, as they once were, we'd be very happy to help and to help open the door uh, for that. But at the present time, uh, they are openly a satellite of the Soviet Union and taking their orders from the Soviet Union, and we see no, uh, no opening uh, for us to, to be of help. Uh, Mr. President, do you think that when you finish your second term, among your legacy to history will be a Central America and a Caribbean free of communism and tyranny? I don't know whether we can accomplish that entirely, <laughs> to qualify that word, uh, but uh, I think that the progress that is being made in Latin America uh, with regard to the democracy uh, is far 
uh, more outstanding than many of us have realized uh, over these past couple of years. Right now, about 90% of the people in Latin America live in democracies or in countries that are rapidly moving toward democracy. That has never been true before. And we're going to continue helping in every way we can uh, to keep that trend going. But I think great progress has been made. Uh, Mr. President, one final question. Would you be discussing the situation and the activities of Cuba and Nicaragua with Mr. Gorbachev uh, in Vienna? Uh, I, I would think that that, uh, that subject could very well come up because as, uh, as I view this, these talks with uh, Mr. Gorbachev and our our effort to try and lessen the hostility and see if we can't eliminate some of the suspicion that exists between the two countries there, I think very, very much that we would uh, point out to him the, the contrast be between uh, our own conduct and what he is doing with regard to the Americas or what his country is doing with regard to the Americas by way of, of Cuba. Uh, principally, and uh, get that out on the table as one of the facets of the relationship that uh, we think stands in the way of of um, any better relationship with the Soviet Union. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>